All right, y'all repeat after me. Say, oh, 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 Sing it again.
No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, lift that up with me. You said no more chains. No more bondage. I am free. Now I only need the people who believe it to sing it. Open your mouth and say no more, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Now one more time to confuse the enemy. No more shackles, say no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Now if you know you're free, go ahead and lift up the highest praise. Help us say hallelujah. No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, choir. Come on, help me say no more. No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles. for the gift of your freedom. God, we come to you this morning, God, in a season when people are anticipating material gifts, but God, we've come and gathered in the house this morning just to thank you for the gifts that you provided for us each and every day. God, we thank you for the gift of life. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on a brand new day. God, we thank you for the gift of your peace that passes all understanding. 
God, we thank you for the gift of your love, God, that is like no other. God, we thank you for the gift of your joy, God, that is our strength. God, we thank you for the gift of your grace and mercy that has kept us as we have gone throughout another week, God. We say thank you. God, we thank you for the gift of your provision and your protection, God, as we've traveled up and down the highways. God, we thank you for the gift of your family and friends, God, that you have blessed us with. God, we say thank you. But God, most of all, we thank you for the gift of your darling son, Jesus Christ, that came down to this earth, God, in humility, God, in servanthood, God, just for us. God, we thank you for the gift of his precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. God, we thank you for the gift of the Ruach breath of life that allows us to inhale and exhale. And God, we thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, God. God, we thank you, God, for each person who is assembled within these walls where it said in your word where two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. And so, God, we don't want to be ingrates, God, but we've come to, God, give you our best praise because you deserve the very best praise. God, we've come to sing hallelujah. We've come to shout thank you, Jesus. We've come, God, to lift our hands and our hearts towards the hills from which cometh our help, knowing our help comes from you. And God, for the person that entered into this place, God, broken hearted, God, we know you to be a heart mender. We know you, God, to be a mind regulator. We know you, God, to be every single thing that we need. And so we come, God, on bended knee and open hearts looking to you. God, we thank you, God, in this Advent season, God, for we are sitting and waiting in expectation for, God, what we know you're already going to do in our lives. God, we love you today. God, we pray that you would just have your way in this worship experience. God, move from pew to pew and heart to heart. God, touch every need, God, that needs to touch in a healing from you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we honor you. God, we bless you. God, you're worthy of the praise. And so, God, let us do just that through this experience. Let all of our worship, God, be sweet music unto your ears. And we will continue to give you all of the honor, the praise, and the glory. In your darling son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And let us all say amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. say thank you thank you lord sing thank you thank you sing it like you mean it today thank you lord you sang thank you
Now has he been so good to anybody today? If you know that he's been so good, open your mouth and say, you've been so good to sing. You've been, Lord, you've been so, so good, so good, so good you've been. This is the verse I like right here. Has he made a way for anybody this week? Open your mouth. He's made a way. Made a way. Lord, you made a way. When you didn't see how there was going to be a way, he made a way. He made a way. Lord, you made. Lord, you made. I just wanna, 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 I just wanna. me. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Oh, got something to be grateful for and it shouldn't take long for you to look back and reflect on something that God has done for you even if it's just this morning he woke you up you were clothed in your right mind you had food on your table if you wanted it you had clothes to put on your back you had shelter over your head and for that God we are grateful our scripture reading for this morning is coming from, the, from Luke, the first chapter, and we'll be lifting just one verse, verse 41. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Luke chapter one, verse 41, and it reads, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit the word of God for the people of God. And we all say, thanks be unto God. Amen. 
Good morning. If you look in the little cubbies in front of you, you should have the copy of the Advent service. In this season of Advent, we're filled with anticipation, excited anticipation of the coming Savior. In consecrational prayer this morning, Pastor said, you were born to die. We now understand how the story ends, but back then they didn't. They didn't know exactly what Christ would go through. They didn't have the, the luxury of having scriptures or, or having seen him perform miracles, but we've read about what Christ has done. But he was literally born just to die. And so in this season, we, we are filled with anticipation, not of gifts of what we'll receive or what somebody will do for us or even the vacation time off, but just the opportunity to reflect on all that God has done for us in sending us his son to die for us to redeem us, to restore us to an opportunity to, to live again. So with that thought in mind, when God's people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief, Isaiah proclaimed, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the, to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, Isaiah 61st chapter, first through the third verse. Okay. We come today as people who are also surrounded by suffering and grief. And yet the spirit hovers among us, tending and anointing, inspiring freedom where there is captivity, declaring blessing in places the world has cursed, and igniting fierce joy where mourning and heartache prevail. Congregation. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, just peace, and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. offering. So as our ushers come forward, we ask that you prepare <clears throat> for the benevolent offering at this time. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me but you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour out you a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. 
upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him. Every man according as he prospers in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Blessed is the considers the poor. The Lord will the Lord will deliver him in a time of trouble. He that has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. All things. I will have a song from the choir. How many of you know that the Lord will fight for you? How many of you know that he'll win the battles that he fights for you? Yeah. Choir, you ready? Somebody call the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. Lion of Judah. Oh, you reign over all the land, yeah. You are the Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. We're going to do that again. The Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. The Lion of Judah. Oh, you reign over all the land. You are the Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. The Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. Come on, somebody say, He's mighty. Worthy. Worthy of the glory. You are mighty. Holy. Worthy of the glory and I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. Hey, I lift your name. Somebody say, I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. The great I am. The great Somebody I say, am. Lion of Judah. Whoa, oh, you reign over all the land. You are the Lion of Judah. Whoa, oh, you are my Lord and King. The Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. You are mighty, holy, worthy. Glory, you are mighty, mighty holy, holy, worthy, worthy of the glory. Of glory. You are mighty, mighty holy, holy, worthy, worthy of the glory. Of glory. You are mighty, mighty holy, holy, worthy, worthy of the glory. And I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. I lift your name 
on high. I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. I lift your name. I lift your name. I lift your name on high. 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 Hey, I lift your name. Put your hands together. Somebody say, I lift, I lift your name. Somebody say, whoa, I lift. Because he's holy. Because he's worthy. I lift your name. Whoa. I lift, I lift. I lift your name. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. Sing it to him today. The Lion of Judah. Oh, you reign. You reign. You reign. Oh, the Lion of Judah. To myself, there's nothing like the name of Jesus. Demons quiver and fear and flee at the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease rolls away, and healing and recovery come in place at the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus helps us in our sorrows, steadies our emotions, help our feelings to be better. The name of Jesus is the only name whereby men and women might be saved through faith in Jesus the Christ. Do we have any first time visitors in the house this morning? This is your very first time visiting with Victory AME. You don't have to say anything, just wave your hand so we can recognize you. Amen. Come on, let's give her a hand. We're so glad you're here. They're going to give you a 
a visitor's pack, if you don't mind filling it out, give her something to write with, and we'll, um, I'll make sure I come by to say hello to you after benediction and just before um, church conference. Come on, give God praise and give God glory for all he's doing. I love the Lord. And I understand that God loved me before I had a chance to be cognitive of the fact that I needed to love him back. God was already loving me. And for God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, begotten son, King James Virgin says, that whosoever might believe in him would have everlasting life. I said all of that to say before I do a quick prayer for altar prayer is that you can fall into this universalism if you want to. You can fall into all of this inclusionism that is going on in the kingdom of God and think you're going to get to heaven without Jesus. The word of God says that I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man come up to the Father except by me. You can fall into all this modelism where you want to talk about God as being in expressions, but I'm here to tell you God is fully human. We see him in his personhood, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the doctrine of the Judo-Christian faith. And uh, Jesus tells us, the scripture tells us to be weary of any people who come preaching any of the gospel. And a lot of people you listening to, when they talk about Jesus, they're talking about another gospel. Amen. But I want you to know in African Methodism and even in African Methodism circles where it may not be, but all up in here in victory, we believe in the theology of Trinity. We believe in the personhood of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we believe that no matter who you are, you must confess your sins and have faith in Christ if you want eternal life amen all this stuff about everybody going to heaven and there is no hell when the scripture says there was a rich man and a poor man by the name of Lazarus and it said the rich man found himself in hell and he saw the poor man Lazarus resting in the bosom of Abraham and called out to him because he wanted to come where he was he said no you had your chance and you didn't do what you needed to do. You needed to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Although that hadn't happened yet. He said, I tell you what, because the, the poor man Lazarus, there's a chasm between you and I. Even if I wanted to come to you to dip my finger in water to cool what you're in, I can't do it. Then he said, I tell you what, too late for me. Go tell my brothers. He said, no. They got Abraham, they got Moses and all the prophets. And now we got Jesus and the apostles and the disciples. Let them believe what they have said. How can you have a faith? How can you have Christianity and a heaven and no hell when tenets of the faith are that you have faith, that you believe, that you repent of your sins, and that you are sanctified and accounted righteous through your faith in Jesus Christ? If all of us going to heaven and there is no hell, what we up in here in church for? Just do what we want to do, how we want to do it, and go on and live eternity with God. Amen. I've been reading and studying a lot of stuff in my spare time, so I just got to spill it out into you because all this stuff is coming up again since Bishop Carlton Pearson died. That's all you can see on YouTube. That's all you can see on the Christian channels. Everybody want to talk about it, but I want you to have sound doctrine. I want you to know what you're talking about. So when people come to you with it, you can refute that um, mess in the name of Jesus. Would you do me a favor and bow your head all over the sanctuary, wherever you are. If you feel like you need to press your way and make your way to the chancellor rail before the altar this morning, we invite you to do so now. As the minister of music plays softly and possibly sings softly, we invite you to the chancellor rail before the altar of God if you need that space this morning. If there's something you want God to do, he'll do it to you. If you talk to God, he'll hear you. And he'll talk back to you. If you listen to a God, obey his instructions, God will bless you. With favor upon favor. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice this morning who needs favor? Hallelujah. If they're sick among us, the Bible says you call upon the elders of the church and they shall anoint you and lay hands upon you and that the sick would recover. 
If there's anybody among us who's struggling this morning, struggling with your mental health, struggling with oppression and anxiety and depression, if there's anybody among us who's struggling in your physical body, God is still a hitter. If you believe Jehovah Rapha will heal you and that God is the God of the healers, you are in the right place. If there's anybody who finds themselves in a state of confusion in the midst of an earthly hell and find that you can find peace nowhere, I offer to you Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace. Is there anyone among you, among us, who just needs to hear from God? God is in your midst because he's omnipresent. If you sit still long enough, if you listen long enough, you will not only hear him, but you will feel his presence. Father God, we come in the beloved name of Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We come this morning, God, because we need you every hour of every day. The songwriter says, I need thee, O Lord, I need thee. We need you, God, right now. We need you. We pray for the sick among us that are among us. I pray for my mother-in-law. I pray for Sister Betty King. I pray for Sister Virgie Anglin. I pray for Sister Virgie Miles. I pray for Sister Sally Holmes. I pray, God, that you do what you need to do in the person's name that I want to call but should not call out loud. We thank you for the miracles that you are performing. We thank you for the healing that is taking place. We thank you for the recovery and the rest. We thank you, God, for the deliverance. We thank you for making a way. We thank you for being God. Because besides you, there is no other. Let us forever look to the hills from which comes our help, knowing that all our help comes from God. Bless us with your favor and your flavor and your presence and your provision and your protection. Bless us with ways out of no ways. Bless us, God. Be the light of our darkness. These prayers we pray in the blessed name of your son, Jesus the Christ, and the people of God said amen, 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 and amen. Come on, put your hands together all over the place. Give God some praise. You can do a little better than that. Put your hands together all over the place. Give God some praise. If you can, open your mouth and just shout, Thank you, Jesus. That'll move heaven and earth. I believe you ought to try it again because somebody didn't participate. You ought to open your mouth and just shout, Thank you, Jesus. I believe that moves heaven and earth. I want to do it one more time. I've done it for the Father and one for the Son. Now for Holy Spirit. I believe if you open your mouth and say the words that I'm about to say, that it will move heaven and earth. Because when you call on the name of Jesus, something stops to happen. I don't know what the something is that you need to happen. But if you can just call on his name, if you could worship him, if you could magnify him if you could exalt him somebody for the third time on the count of three we just gonna say those three words together one two three thank you Jesus he's already made a way come on prepare our hearts for the word of God choir How many of you believe that it's already getting better? Amen. Clap your hands if you believe that it's already getting better. He's already doing whatever you just prayed about. Whatever you just put up to him, it's already working. He's already doing it. Already. It's already getting better. Getting better. It's already getting easier. Already getting easier. He's already, God's already moving on. Moving on my it's already sing. Lift 
set up today. God's already moving on your behalf. Oh. Now just say, he did it for me. He did it for me. Thank you. Put your hands on yourself this morning. Oh, he did it, he did it. He did it for me. God did it. God did it. He did it. He did yes, he did. Yes, God did it. For me. Oh, for me, he did it. God did, it. God did it. He did it. He did it. Somebody say, yes, it's God already. Did it. It's already getting better. Getting better. It's already getting easier. God's already. God's already. He's already moving on your behalf. On You're still praying about it. He's moving, but he's moving. Say, yes, it is. Yes it is, yes it is, God's already, oh, somebody say, he did it, he did it for me, I know he did it for me, I don't know who did it for you, but God did it for me, God did it, he did it, Yes, God. Yes, God did it for me. Well, He did it for me. Oh, He did it. He did it. He did it for me. God did it. God did it. He did it. He did it. God did it. God did it. Oh, God did it. My God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. My God did, it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Yes, He did. God did it. Yes, He did. Yes, God did it. For me. for me. He did it. He did it for me. He did it. He did it for me. I'm so glad God did it. God did it. He did it. He did yes, He did. Yes, God did for me. Well, sing. He did it for me. If you know God did it, sing. He did it for me. Now we've been singing up here, but I want to hear y'all out here today. He Choir it. hush. Yes, God for me. Y'all yeah. better sing this morning. He did it. Yes. God did it. Come on, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. My God did it. My God did it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, God did it for me. Yes, God did it for me. He did it for me. Now this is the part where you find your own place of worship. Close your eyes and connect with the Father. Say, He did it. Think about what He's done for you. And if you can't think about what He did this week, what He do this month, what He do this year, what did He bring you from? What did He bring you out of? What did He save you from? Hey, 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 hey.
Has he delivered anybody? Has he set anybody free? I don't know about y'all, but I had some things that only God could do this year. Just this week, just last week, only God. Hey, well, 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 well. Yes, God. name be praised hallelujah and amen yeah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. if you believe God's a way maker shout hallelujah. hallelujah if you believe God's a heart fixer shout hallelujah. hallelujah if you ever had a broken heart God mended you back together again. Shall thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe God to be a healer again, shall thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe God to be a waymaker, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you ever been in darkness, you know him to be the light of the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you ever been down and out to your last dime, and God made a way for you each and every time, yeah. put a thank you on the front of it and then shout hallelujah. Yeah. If you're saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and grateful to God for all he's done for you, shout thank you, Jesus. If you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and have been gifted the gift of eternal life through your faith in Jesus, shout hallelujah and thank you one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know you still got breath in your body because God is not through with you yet, go on and tell him thank you. Thank you. I forgot to mention Sister Melody Jackson's name and Sister Joanne Taylor's name when I was praying for people who needed to be healed and who were sick. Let us pray. God, help me preach. You know I got a theme from last week to next Sunday, but I'm struggling with a subject for the day. Bless the word on as you can, and when it's all said and done, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Give the choir an opportunity to come and be seated and hear the word of God in the congregation. Turn again to the gospel of St. Luke chapter number 1, verse number 41. Celeste and I in the crumb snatcher. 
time flies. My oldest crumb snatcher is going to be 22 years old in about seven weeks. Time flies. And while all the hustle and bustle is going around about Christmas in the midst of Advent, the greatest gift for me is waking up and seeing my family saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. I might say out loud, if there's no gift for me under the Christmas tree, how displeased I am. But to see the joy on my wife and my offspring's faces is all the gift I need outside of Christ Jesus. And if you got a family, whatever the constitution of your family may be, whatever the makeup of it is, you ought to give God and praise and glory for your family. Amen. For your parents, whether they're living or going on, they had something to do with who you are. For your grandparents and great-grandparents who laid down a legacy for you to walk in the freedoms that you now walk in. For siblings that I pray you get along with. And if you ain't speaking to them, you ought to call them. Amen. And tell them you ain't, you ain't got sense enough to ask for forgiveness. But I forgave you a long time ago and I'm tired of dealing with all this foolishness. My Christmas gift is to you is to forgive you out loud and let God keep on dealing with you. Amen. You have to love some folk from a distance. Uh, I'm going to preach this sermon before I get off in something else. Amen. Um, the gospel of Luke chapter number one records these words. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, her baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him. The word of God for the people of God. And we all said, thanks be unto God. Continuing with our theme, Ridiculous Blessings, Favor, I thought about preaching um, from the subject, Favor is Leaping in Me. I thought about preaching, Favor Recognizes Favor. But I could never settle on a topic. Even in the midst of prayer on yesterday, and prayer last night, and prayer this morning, I could find no particular subject to go with the theme of the series that we began on last Sunday and God willing will end on Christmas Eve next Sunday. So all I have for you today is ridiculous blessing, favor of God. When Mary had heard from the angels and she had submitted to the will of God and said, be unto me God, whatever your will is for me. The same angel came and visited Mary and told her, your cousin Elizabeth, who has had a womb like the womb of Sarah and is past the age of bearing children, who is married to the priest Zacharias, is now with child. Stop by to tell somebody this morning that when favor and ridiculous blessings are happening, they're not just happening to you. That God is passing out favor and blessings on an everyday basis. And if he did it for someone else, God will also do it for you. And so Mary decides that she would go and visit her cousin Elizabeth. And from the moment that Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, not when she necessarily just saw her, but from the hearing of the greeting of Mary, John, who was on the inside of Elizabeth, began to leap with joy. John understood that favor had walked in the house. And not just any favor, but highly favored. Because Mary had been selected to bring the Christ child into the earth. And because John was connected to Elizabeth by his umbilical cord, because his mother was providing him with all of his nourishment, because he was in the darkness of the womb, it did not prevent him from seeing the light of the favor of God that had entered into his presence. The favor in her, which is John. John's name means God is gracious. And God was gracious to Elizabeth and to Zachariah because he gave them the desires of their heart. But what was on the inside of her was greater than the blessing that she had received to conceive a child. 
morning, I stopped by this morning to let somebody know leaping in you, Holy Spirit, has you in preparation mode because God is preparing you for ridiculous favor. I wish I had somebody who could testify this morning, male or female, that you are impregnated with hope and your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You do not trust the sweetest refrain. You're not leaning and depending on anything that this world has to offer, but your hope is built in Christ. And since you have hope in Christ, you've got favor from God want to talk to somebody who's looking through a glass that's darkly veiled and you see darkness when light should be in your vision I want you to trust in God with your faith because faith is about the evidence of things that are not seen because God has a blessing for you that God is going to pour upon you like Elizabeth your favor from God is twofold somebody say twofold there's a blessing for you but a greater blessing for the kingdom of God the blessing for Elizabeth and Zachariah was that God gave them a child and in particular a son that they have wanted all of their life Zacharias had been faithful as a priest but he had no seed from the womb of his wife Elizabeth Zacharias and Elizabeth had been faithful about being a good Jew and, and committing themselves to the laws and the commandments and the customs and the rituals of the priesthood and what it is to be a son or daughter of the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the favor that God poured into Elizabeth's womb was twofold. And the favor that God pours upon you is twofold. There's a blessing in it for you, but there's also a blessing in it for the kingdom of God. Elizabeth's blessing was the opening of her womb that was considered to, to be done and over with. In her Elizabeth, we see that God can take the greatest negative in our life, our deepest desires and wants, provide them and bless his kingdom at the same time. That's why when you pray, you ought to pray to God for his will to be done while you're asking God for the desires of your heart. Because when your heart lines up with the will of God in your life God has to send a double blessing a blessing for you a blessing for his kingdom and then a trifold blessing a blessing for you a blessing for the community and family around you and the greatest blessing is always the blessing for the kingdom of God miracle of Elizabeth conception and deliverance pales in contrast to what God would do with her son by the name of John you see we shout more over the initial ridiculous blessing than the manifestation of the greater blessing that is to come you shout because God paid the bills this month and there wasn't enough money to come but in that blessing God had already spoken to your spirit and told you that I'm about to bless you in such a manner that you're never going to have to worry about how the bills are going to be paid every month for the rest of your life and you shouted over December bill being paid but God dropped the seed in your harvest that has come in time for you to reap it and your bills are paid in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December of every year of the rest of your life. Yeah we shout over the initial blessing but the real praise ought to be about what God's about to do. What John did as the preparer crying out to in the wilderness is greater than the conception of his birth. It's greater than God coming into a dry womb and making space for John. The Bible says the beginning of the facts regarding the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written and forever remains in the writings of the prophet Isaiah. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you. That's John, y'all who will prepare your way a voice of one shouting in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path 
path waves straight. Ah, might I do more than just merely suggest this morning uh, this notion fulfills the call of youth to maximizing what God has called you to do. Uh, the initial blessing is because you've been aggravating God and praying to God for God to do something specific in your life. And God says, I bless you with the desires of your heart. But in the desires of your heart, I have the will of my kingdom in your life. And I need you to maximize everything that I poured into you. Even if you are a preparer, an armor bearer, or in some position that puts you in what looks like and is to some degree a lower position, you ought to maximize everything that God has in you for the place for which you serve. Because when ridiculous blessing comes, God doesn't have to have you in a position that is looked favorably upon by men. If God can bless Bishop Frank Madison, read the third, he can bless the Reverend Dr. Patricia S. Wallace, your presiding elder. If he could bless Patricia S. Wallace, he could bless Michael Brian Price. And if he could bless Michael Brian Price, he can bless the Williams, he can bless the Morris, he can bless the Sanchez's, he can bless the Black, he can bless the Browns, he can bless the Frasers, he can bless the Henderson, he can bless the Floyds, he can bless the Kings, he can bless the Mitchells, he can bless the Wilsons, he can bless the Southforth, he can bless the Jones, he can bless the Soxons, he can bless the Greens. God can bless you wherever you are. God doesn't need you to be the CEO of the corporation. What God has for you, it is for you. Because ridiculous favors, blessings are not tied to the level of the position, but rather to the commitment and the faith applied to the call and the place of life where you stand. Somebody is saying, I need ridiculous favor. And God is saying, you already have ridiculous favor. You just haven't activated your faith. The problem is that you don't believe I can bless the cashier at Publix as much as I can bless the family who started Publix. The problem is you don't believe you can be blessed being a sanitary worker, but I can. The problem is you don't believe you can be blessed just being a praiser in the worship house and an intercessor of prayer. You think you gotta be in the pulpit you think you gotta have a title associated with your name but God said I don't need titles and positions I just need a committed heart a made up mind and somebody who's willing to be faithful they asked him why then John are you baptizing if you are not the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet John answered I baptize only in water but among you there stands one whom you do not recognize and of whom you know nothing it is he the preeminent one who comes after me the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie even as his slave do what you were called to do and the ridiculous blessings the favor of God will seek you out it will find you I remember looking for favor in pastoral appointments couldn't find it nowhere disappointed November after November and the same person who I was looking for favor from said to me in October son I told you that, 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 that favor would find you leadership would find you if you're faithful over a few things God will make you a ruler over many things and don't you shut out the favor and the blessing of God because it didn't come in the manner in which you wanted to come in somebody's gonna unwrap a beautiful gift on Christmas morning but be disappointed when you open it up don't you get wrapped up tied up cut it up mangled up and messed up in what it looks like if it comes from God it's got to be a blessing John said I, I gotta do what God told me to do 
Because out here in this wilderness, I'm seeing ridiculous blessings and ridiculous favor. I eat the honey from the honeycomb and I'm satisfied. Come here, Apostle Paul. Paul said, in all of my doing, I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to be in want. I know what it is to be full and what it is to be hungry. But can I tell y'all that God who supplies all of your needs according to to his riches and glory has already poured out ridiculous favor and blessings into your life. That's why John was able to be satisfied with his ministry because he realized that where he was and what he was doing was what he was called to do. And when you walk in the calling of God in your life, God will pour out favor on favor, on top of favor, on top of favor on top of favor and folk will be looking at you and wondering why is that person so content why did this person have joy even in the midst of sorrow why do they shed tears but still say the law is going to make a way somehow it happens because favor ain't fair when you get the unmerited favor of God and realize that everything that's happening in you and with you and for you and around you and behind you and underneath you and over you uh, it's because God is in the atmosphere and he's orchestrating everything uh, so that it all works in your favor and for your good the favor of God is leaping in you because God has a plan for you you know the text Jeremiah 29 and 11 you may know it and you may know it word for word and how to quote it from the King James version or some other version but if you don't believe it if you don't apply it in your life if you don't understand where the text comes from because before the 29th chapter was the 28th chapter when the prophet had lied not Jeremiah but another prophet had lied to them and told them you're only going to be in captivity for five years Jeremiah had to come back and tell him you know you're going to be just what God said you're going to be there for 70 years but at the end of the 70 years I promise you God has not forgotten about you and I, I just came to tell somebody this morning who feels like you in your 70 year period and you don't see no way out and feel like God has forgotten about you this verse is for you God said put your name in it for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you says the Lord plans for your peace and well-being and for your not your disaster to give you a future and hope don't you lose your hope you better trust in God all the days of your life and every awakening moment with every breath you take because the favor of God is leaping on the inside of you somebody said pastor how can the favor leap if I'm in my bondage how can the favor leap if I'm tied up how can the favor leap if I'm in a dark period how can the favor leap if I'm in the wilderness or the desert I came to tell you once again it doesn't matter position or location when the favor of God is down on the inside of you and God has blessed you you don't mind leaping with Holy Spirit you don't mind shouting and praising God you better praise God where you are for where God is going to take you you better praise God for where you are because God might leave you right there but turn that whole situation around and bless you in the place that you thought was dried up if you if you know this season of your life will be poured on, rained on with ridiculous blessing and favor you ought to give God some praise you ought to worship God you ought to open your mouth with thanksgiving you ought to lift his name on high and there is something leaping in your spirit why don't you leap to your feet and open your mouth with shouts of thanksgiving why don't you use a voice of victory a praise of faith and declare up in him this is my season for grace.
is for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. I said it last Sunday. I may say it again next Sunday. What you sow is what you're going to reap. For the one who sows to the flesh, that is his sinful capacity, his or her worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh the ruin and destruction but the one who sows to the spirit from the spirit reaps eternal life so let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good for at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in so then while we as individual believers have the opportunity let us do good to all people not only being helpful but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those of the household of God faith born again believers I've got a seed in my crown that's blessing no more stressing bye bye sleepless nights because the psalmist declared weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the show can take it away joy to the world the Lord has come listen everything not some things but everything is working together for your good for my good and is good I said it's working together for my good listen 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 the songwriter said God is leaning in my direction has to say the psalmist said remember me Lord when you show favor to your people come to my aid when you save them that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise Lord I can hear showers of blessings Lord I hear showers of blessing thou art scattering full and free showers of blessings the thirsty land refreshing let some dropping fall on me somebody said who me the hymnologist said even me even me let some drops now fall on me and I just come to testify I just come to be a witness that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding if you put away the manuscript of the plan of your life that you wrote and tear it up and throw it in file 13 if you go on your pad on your laptop on your smartphone and throw away and delete the plan you wrote for yourself and sit down with Holy Spirit and say Lord I'm your child why don't you show me what you want me to do show me how you want me to do it and watch God pour favor down on the plans of your life because when your life is lined up with the word of God with the will of God with the way of God the favor of God will find itself permanently in your life come 
somebody talk about ridiculous favor, ridiculous blessings, ridiculous miracles to somebody who believes that God doesn't want to do all of that just for you. Somebody tell you, you ought to say, even me, even me, Lord, let some of your favor rain down on me and I wish somebody who had enough faith this morning a ridiculous faith will get your ridiculous favor a ridiculous prayer will get your ridiculous answer a ridiculous miracle will bring ridiculous and miraculousness a ridiculous faith will bring you to a new level and you'll have to stress out no more over the old devils but I wish I had somebody up in this house who now believes that God's favor is raining down in this house that we call victory and you're getting ready to have victory after victory after victory because favor after favor after favor is in your life is there anybody under the sound of my voice who's been in and out of favor and you're ready to take off the garments of intermittent favor to put on the garment of permanent favor for the rest of the days of your life why don't you open your mouth and shout glory up in here why don't you open your mouth and say Lord I'm looking for the permanency of your favor I'm ready to humble myself I'm ready to submit myself I'm ready to walk by faith in righteousness so that you can pour your permanent favor down in my life and I'm just wondering in my sanctified soul is there anybody up in this house who's ridiculous enough to believe that God wants ridiculous favor miracles prayer and faith in your life and if you want it you got to get it because faith without works is dead you got to put in in order to get in you've got to work while it's yet day for the night comes and no person can work but if you work God will help you out if you sow you will reap if you pray you'll get an answer if you seek you will find if you knock the door will be open is there anybody in this house who's got a ridiculous praise and a ridiculous worship if I were you I'd spring to my feet open my mouth throw my head back scream hallelujah shout thank you Jesus and declare up in this place I want the ridiculous favor of God because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt if it had not if it had not been for the Lord who's on my side I don't know where I would be is there anybody who can testify I've already had ridiculous favor because I could have been dead sleeping in my grave but God made death stand back and behave is there anybody who's had ridiculous favor of God in your health situation if you're in this house and you've ever heard the doctor say you've got cancer in your body and now you're cancer free you ought to spring to your feet and say I'm a ridiculous saint with ridiculous favor because God healed my body God turned my situation around is there anybody under the sound of my voice who was hooked on drugs and alcohol but God made a way and now you get how on Jesus you ought to say I've got ridiculous favor because I was cracked up drunk 
up shot up and messed up decades of my life but the Lord had to reach way down with ridiculous favor and snatch me up out of my addiction is there anybody in this house who's been down and out downtrodden left behind and maybe forgotten but the Lord said like the hymnologist said they're not a lowly friend like Jesus no not one and God told him I'll be a mother to your motherless I'll be a father to your fatherless and a brother to the brotherless and a sister to the sisterless is there anybody under the sound of my voice said pastor I haven't had any of that well let me come down everybody's avenue because everybody ridiculous favor when you remember the words in the Methodist hymn number 226 amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but no I'm found was blind but now I see through many dangers toils and snares I've already come it was great who brought me on your grace and your mercy has brought me through is there anybody up in here leaning on grace propped up by mercy and can stand and say I've got ridiculous favor because I've got ridiculous faith and my ridiculous faith has told me greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world my ridiculous faith says yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil my ridiculous faith says taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the person who trusted in him my ridiculous faith says wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart Wait, I say, on the Lord. Is there anybody got a ridiculous praise? Shout hallelujah. Shout thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody need a ridiculous answer? Well, give a ridiculous praise. Run over this church. Shout in this church. Speak in unknown tongues in this church. Lay hands on yourself. Because every now and then, you've got to do what the songwriter said because nobody else is going to do it for you but sometimes you have to speak a word over yourself sometimes you have to encourage yourself is there anybody ready to encourage themselves open your mouth throw your hands up how far God lift up your voice shout with a voice of victory 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 and say to your enemies all I do is win 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 even when it looks like I'm losing I'm still winning shout with a voice of victory shout with the voice of victory if God made a way then he'll make a way now if he did it yesterday he'll do it today and tomorrow if he's a provider he's a provider a provision and a way maker shout with a ridiculous shout pray your ridiculous prayers somebody up in here say yes Say yes. Oh yes. Come on, give him the praise. Come on, give him the glory. I got a praise. I got happen now. I got running in my feet, clapping in my hands. I got a shout in my voice. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Praise is the key that's going to unlock the door to your favor oh magnify the lord with 
me. Let us exalt his name together. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Say it. Oh, yes. I will. I will. I will. Bless the Lord. At all times, his praise continuously will be in more my lips. I will bless the Lord at all times, and praises will continually be in my mouth. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes. Praise, I gotta praise and I gotta get it high. I praise. I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta get it high. I gotta praise. I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise and I gotta get it high. I gotta praise. rise to our feet yeah. all across the sanctuary and come to a more holy attentive place on Facebook today and YouTube next week you can experience levels of the favor of God even when you have acknowledged have not acknowledged God because every day God wakes up any being and allows them to live on planet earth. They have an opportunity to get to know God. But even when you refuse to come into relationship with him, you're receiving favor from God. But to experience this ridiculous favor that we're talking about, you've got to know God and God has to know you for the pardoning of your sins. You have to walk with God and be with God, to be in a relationship with God. And I stand at this moment of decision, which we call in the language of the church, an invitation to discipleship. But I simply come to offer Christ to you so that you can experience the joys of knowing that you have eternal life while you continue to work by faith to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to bring others to this marvelous light and out of the darkness of the recesses and places of this world. If you're here today 
and you don't know God as your personal savior, you've never confessed with your own mouth and believed in your heart that he is the son of the living God. We want you to come down this aisle or to raise your hand and we will come with you and pray with you the sinner's prayer. If you're on Facebook Live right now or YouTube posting on next week on our YouTube channel, you can inbox us, you can message us and someone will get back to you and we'll take you in. You can be a virtual church member. If you're here today and you're estranged from God and you walked away from God because God never walked away from you and you want to come recommit yourself to God and say, God, I want to start all over again. Will you come? If you're in this place and you're looking for a church home and God has spoken to you, that victory is the place you are to be. Will you come? If there be none on the end of those pills, you may be seated in the presence of God. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some more praise. Give God some more glory. <laughs> He's worthy of the praise for those of us who have not whose our, our offering and tithes are not automatically withdrawn from our various debit cards and checking our savings accounts we're getting ready to have our public offering for tithes and for offering for those of you who are watching on Facebook live and YouTube on next week the means of giving electronically are going to appear on your screen if you're not um, in the virtual world and you're not able to give electronically um, the name and address of the church it's going to appear on your screen so you can send it through snail mail cat no cash please money order and checks don't run the risk of mailing in cash if you're sitting in the sanctuary as the ushers come forth now to receive your offering there should be an orange colored sheet in the pew in front of you that tells you what the church's cash app is what the church's um, Givelify account is what the church's Zelle account is how you can go on to the church's website and touch the donate field and you can set yourself up as a one-time giver a once a month giver a once a week giver a biannual giver however you choose to do if you're looking for a place out there on Facebook live and you do not have a church home because if you have a church home and a pastor you ought to be giving your tithes there and you're looking for a place to tithe I declare that victory is good ground for you to sow your seed and you will receive a bountiful harvest from God believe it children the more you give to him the more he gives to you you can't beat God's giving I don't care how hard you try because God is a promise keeper. God will give it back to you. Press down, shaken together, pouring out into your bosom. And he'll give it to you now. Plus on the other side. How many of you believe is more blessed to give than to receive? Because if you're always in the giving business, that means God has to keep on supplying. I think y'all missed that. If you're always in the giving business, that means God has to keep on supplying. Because he knows he can trust you to give beyond yourself. And the more you give, God will give you more so you can give more. But how many of you know that when God gives you more and you give more, that means you have more. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, we pray a harvest for the people who are sowing that they may reap. But we pray first that their heart is right, that their life is right, because you don't dwell in unclean places. You know the needs of this particular ministry, and you have always supplied, soon to be 60 four years we thank you keep on doing what you're doing but we ask you to open a new portal of heaven pour us down a new blessing we have room enough not to receive in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray amen, amen. Reverend Soxon is coming with our announcements I'll go ahead and announce now as you're seated we'll go immediately into church conference following the um, the benediction to pass our budget appoint stewards um, we're a little behind on that, Pastor. Was a little out of order. Amen. So let's um, let's get that done as soon as service is over, um, so Pastor can um, run home and take care of family and see if I can get back to the late Advent service if that's possible today. You gonna make? Good morning. Very brief announcements. Um, join us. Monday mornings at 6 a.m. for Strength for the Week. 
If you desire to support our pastor in receiving a match grant for his doctoral degree, please make, please fill out an envelope and make che checks payable to Michael B. Price. Um, wanted to reannounce Maurice S. Pickett II. Um, celebrate him graduating on Friday, this past Friday at 6 p.m. from Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. <laughs> Um, with his Master's of Business Administration. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gotta be there. <laughs> Everybody can't be there. Um, I, I don't know if you all remember Maurice, but his mom used to come and sit back there, so Sister Carolyn Pickett, and sometimes his father, Maurice Sr. But his mother brought him to us when he was in sixth grade because he was diagnosed with high blood pressure. And um, she's been faithful. She created a $1,000 scholarship specifically for victory. And no one wrote an essay to get the money. Um, and it could have gone to, um, to, to any person at FAMU. And we got several people at FAMU, including my son. And, um, they, and there's still a lot there if anybody needs that, that scholarship. But um, he graduated, um, I think his bachelor's degree was from business school, but he graduated with his master's of business um, administration from the Student Business Institute at Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, which is the number one HBCU five years in a row. And as of yesterday, the football champions of historically black college and universities for the first time since 1998. This is a license to preach in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. This is to... <laughs> Episcopal Church license to preach. This is to certify to Brother Jalen Michael Christian Robinson, Brother D'Angelo <laughs> LaDon Taylor. Come on, Don has given evidence that God has called them into the Christian ministry. It was licensed to preach the Christian gospel in the African Methodist, I'm reading slow, I'm waiting on done. In the African Methodist Episcopal Church rendered this first quarterly conference under the jurisdiction of the District Tampa from Victory African Methodist Episcopal Church at Tampa on the 14th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. Now these licenses have the redongo. No, he, oh, I thought he could move faster than that. He's a football coach. Um, these, oh, oh, okay, the old football, old football coach. These licenses are signed by the presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. Patricia S. Wallace. With your level of a master's degree, this year, class of admissions, next year, first year, and then 2026, second year, you're still in the local track. If you change your mind, you can be ordained an itinerant deacon in 2026. <laughs> Brother Don, your license, same for you. You can get one with the new bishop signature on it in three years if you complete your bachelor's of science or bachelor of arts degree and be ordained an itinerant um, deacon, which you already said, that's the slot you want to be on, you and Brother Ron. He was at the planning meeting, so he got his license there. Come on, let's give them a big round of applause. I love my daughters, but you all did see the, the big pride smile I had on with that, right? Because um, Reverend Presley left, and that just left me and Reverend Green here all by our lonesome. And Reverend Murphy went on to be with God, and that just left me and Reverend Green here all by our lonesome. And then it took a woman, minister, formerly Reverend Jerrica Turnbull, to come in here on May, first Sunday in May, and preach from the depths of her soul in heaven. And three sons came in one day. Um, this ministry is blessed. And don't you let nobody tell you any different. Amen. Praise God from whom 
all blessings flow. is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end let us all sing <laughs> 